In this video, I talked to Matt Allen from Dumb Passive Income. And I've known Matt for years. Actually, he's one of the very first people that I reached out to when I started Niche Site Project. So it was a pleasure talking to him. He's been blogging since like 2010, but Dumb Passive Income was started in like 2012. So we talk about uh, family life and kind of you know what he does full time. He's a truck driver, like an 18 wheeler, and he works locally up in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. And cool thing, we enjoy a beer together. Now, a little bit of a downside, he was not capable of doing video with me, um, so we're just gonna be listening to the audio, but I thought I'd do a proper intro. And one of the cool things that Matt has been working on for the last two years is a software company. So he's been working on the side on this software company, and you probably have heard of it. It's called Amalinks Pro. And I remember the day that he was like, hey man, we're gonna do this thing. I wanna get your feedback on it. And uh, we, we get into that discussion a little bit. So anyway, it was a pleasure talking to Matt. It was really cool to actually have like a nice long conversation. And we did enjoy a beer together, even though, you know, we couldn't actually like clink glasses or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get to the interview with Matt Allen from Dumb Passive Income. Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here and I'm with my good friend, Matt Allen. How are you doing today? Hey, Doug, I'm doing great. How are you? Doing awesome. And we've known each other for years, basically, as soon as I got started online. And it's a pleasure to talk to you. We've actually chatted on the phone and on like, uh, like Skype calls in the past. But this is the first time that, you know, we're talking at length, I'm going to be able to ask you a lot of questions that, you know, I wasn't able to in a, in a casual, just, you know, quick catch up or whatever. So this is a great honor, Matt. Yeah, this should be fun. And I was just telling you before you hit record, this is only my second ever podcast that I've ever done. So awesome. Awesome. Let's well, do this. It's great to have you here. And you, uh, you sent me an email and you were like, Hey, I can only meet like kind of after work and sort of in the evening hours. And by the way, do you want to have a beer while we're doing the interview? And I'm a beer guy. So I of course said yes. So uh, what do you, what do you have over there that you're going to drink? So right now, my wife actually got me a six pack of this for Valentine's Day last week. It's uh, by Founders, which if you're anywhere in Michigan or near Michigan, you know what, what Founders is. It's a really good microbrewery based right here in Grand Rapids where I live. And this is a new one that I had never even heard of before. It's called Civilized Brew IPA. Nice. And, and which is, it's an extra dry India Pale Ale is what this one is. Beautiful. I love the extra dry ones. It really makes the hops pop. And the, one of Founders' more popular beers is called All Day IPA. You may have heard of that or may have even had it before. And I, I've had one of these already, and this tastes really similar to an All Day IPA, which, which is a session IPA. Very cool. And uh, before you pop it open, I'll tell you about mine. So I'm drinking a Goodnight, which is an Imperial Red from a local brewery here in Longmont. Um, Actually, I guess it's in Lyons, but there's many locations. It's from the Oscar Blues Brewery, and it's an Imperial Red IPA. And um, I think, I'm trying to see the ABV, 8.7 ABV. So, um, yeah, cheers, Matt. I'm going to pop mine open. You could do the same. All right, here we go. Awesome. Mine's only a 6% alcohol by volume, so. Well, and this is a good uh, sort of transition i mean you you have a, a day job so can you tell us a little bit about uh yourself like who are you and what do you do yeah i mean i'm i'm a truck driver by day and when, when i say truck driver i'm really talking about like the 18 wheeler the big rigs that you see going down the highway i've been doing that for actually just th this math just occurred to me actually today while i was on the job uh i don't know if i should really be giving away my age right now but I got my CDL when I was 22 years old, which means I have been driving a truck now for about exactly half of my life. Oh, wow. Cool. Awesome. So and that, that's how old I am, if you can do the math. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're about the same age. I'm, I'm clocking in at 40. And 
so you've been doing you've been doing that for a while and i was looking back because you you also blog and you blog over at dumb passive income can you tell us about the like inception of your blog over there yeah it's kind of a long story i'll try to make it short so i actually started in 2010 not with blogging but i don't know if i've ever actually told anybody this story but somebody got me tried to get me involved in a network marketing like a, a pyramid scam kind of a deal I'm like, fine, I'll do it, but I'm not going to go try to talk to my family and friends and go show videos and, and try to get people to sign up that way. I'm going to see if I can do something online. And I think I just signed up for a Twitter account in 2010 at the time. And so I figured out I was on Blogger. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard of yep. Blogger. It's like, yeah. So I, I got some really, or put together some really simple sites on there to try to promote this network marketing business. And as you can imagine, that didn't work. And, but, but then I realized I'm like, huh, this is cool. I can actually produce content and put it out on the internet. And, and I saw that other people were making money doing that. And so I literally just Googled one day. I'm like, how do you make money online? And that led me into the world of blogging. And then I started a, a personal finance blog. And this is actually kind of one of the biggest mistakes that I've ever made is I, I stayed on blogger. I was, everybody told me you got to switch over to WordPress I'm like, no, no, I'm just going to go against the grain. I'm going to stay on Blogger and I'm going to make it work on Blogger. And so, yeah, I stuck with the personal finance blog for probably close to a year, maybe a little over a year. And then finally in 2012, in May of 2012, I bit the bullet and, and quit the personal finance blog, moved over to WordPress. And, and that's when I bought dumbpassiveincome.com. And that's when I started that blog. And, and around that same time is when I also jumped into niche sites. I, I figured out what niche sites were and, and started building out some of those. And, and that's kind of what dumb passive income was, was I was just kind of chronicling and just blogging about what I was doing to create niche sites and try to make, make money online. Holy cow. So you started your first blog in 2010. Is that right? In a sense, if you want to call that a sure. blog. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I chatted with um, a couple other people earlier today, just doing interviews like this one. And it's amazing. I mean, everyone has um, one or two, not necessarily failures, but along their trajectory, they, they have a, a few websites that they learn their chops. You know, they learn some writing skills, just setting up a website and all that um, before they, they got something that really kind of stuck and, and had some lasting power. So when you started that first uh, like blog and the personal finance blog, when you moved on a little bit from the network marketing promotion and whatnot, um, like, did you have uh, like a desire to write or did, were you a strong writer through, you know, school? I don't know about through school. I just, and it was never anything I, I really did before I started blogging, but I kind of figured out that I really enjoyed the writing part. And, and, and the personal finance stuff, I've always been kind of like a numbers geek. I, I love, I could sit and just mess with my, I use Quicken to, to run my personal finances and I could just spend hours just messing around with the numbers on there and, and making spreadsheets for different scenarios and stuff. And so I just love the personal finance stuff and, and, just, and kind of just helping people and teaching people. I, I had listened to Dave Ramsey on the radio for many years. And so I, I thought I could just write a blog and, and help people learn stuff about money. And, and so I just kind of figured out that I liked the writing part and, and then that kind of like melded into web design and, and figuring out how to make web pages look different ways. And okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And you know what? I didn't even know you had such a strong like personal finance interest and we're definitely going to come back to it, but yeah, I had no clue. I know, I read some of your, some of your blogs on dumb passive income on like financial freedom and, and some of those ideas, but I didn't know you wrote about it for a few years. Do you remember like how you first got interested or have you always been interested in like money and finance and savings and all that? I guess I kind of always have them. I was probably 20 or 21 years old when I first heard Dave Ramsey on the radio. And I'm talking, this was back in the day when, when he was brand new. And he, he was almost begging for people to call into his show. I, I remember actually listening to him, like saying his phone number over and over, waiting for somebody to call in, which, which is kind of crazy for as popular as he is now. 
and, and I, I've mentioned Dave Ramsey a couple of times. And the, the funny thing is, I, I don't even totally agree with all of his advice. M- most of it is really great. Like the staying out of debt, obviously. What, sure. I mean, what, what's not to like about that advice? But as, as far as some of his overall principles, I'm, I'm more of a Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad kind of a guy when it comes to that. Cool. So you're one of the first people that I started following when I found like smart passive income, which I think dumb passive income, I think we're, we're safe to assume that that's an homage to uh, Pat Flynn, right? Pat who? What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so Matt, l- literally I, I found your blog. I think I saw some of your comments and, and maybe you were featured over on niche pursuit Spencer's blog. Do you, do you happen to remember like our first communication or anything? Ah, uh, I do remember it was 2013. It was, wasn't long. It's like right about the exact same time you started niche site project, yes. which was right during Spencer's first niche site project. Yep. Or right around that same time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like basically my, my plan and I've talked about it briefly in, in certain areas, but basically I was like, Hey, I found all these cool people on Spencer's blog. I was following a lot of what he was doing and I was like, I'm going to reach out to people that run blogs and, and they like Spencer's blog and see if like we could just network together. And I think I, I asked you to like write a guest post for my site as I was launching it. And uh, you were like, yeah, sure. So you wrote something for me and you know, we, we've stayed in touch ever since. So it, it's pretty cool to like be, be chatting with you now, interviewing you on my podcast. And um, yeah, like I said, yeah, you're, that, you're one of the first people a, I followed. Yeah. That rings a bell. I remember exactly what that was about now. Cause I, I started a keyword research service that I was selling on my dumb passive income blog and, and you allowed me to kind of push that service or promote it on your blog. Yep. I remember that. Yep. Yep. So, so basically I, I, you know, reached out to like 10 or 12 people and um, I knew I needed help from the community and a few people said, yep. So you were one of them. And uh, our other friend, John Haver over at authority site income was one of them. And, you know, we're all still around doing stuff. So it's kind of cool. Just if, if you stick with it, like things are going to work out probably. So yeah, there, there are a few of us who have stuck with it all this time. I've, I've seen people come and go, but there's a handful of us who, who have remained. So a couple, I, I'm just curious to, to learn a little more about you. So you're, you're a family man. We were just chatting a little about your family and uh, yeah, so can you just tell us a little about like how many kids you have and just per, on a personal level, what do, you, what do you have going on? Yeah, my, my uh, wife and I, we've been married, it'll be 15 years this May. So in a couple months, 15 year anniversary, we have three kids, two sons and a daughter. So my, my sons are 12 and nine and my daughter is seven. Yeah, we're, we're really involved in all kinds of after school sports and different activities and stuff. And life is pretty crazy around here. Right. And you have the, the full-time trucking gig. So I, I take it you're, you're local, so you don't have to do any like long hauls, uh, like overnighters or anything like that. Yeah, I, I pretty much work banker's hours. T- today, I literally worked from nine to five. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, cool. some days it's, you know, a, a trucker's schedule. There is no, you're not standing by a time clock waiting to punch out at an exact time. It's just whenever you get done, you get done. So some days I might not get home till eight o'clock at night. Other days I could get home as early as five. So, okay. So you have three kids, a wonderful wife. You're working um, potentially, you know, fairly long hours, but it sounds like they're uh, fairly reliable as far as like, you know, you're not going to be working like weekends or in the middle of the night or anything like that. So like, how do you deal with your time management and productivity and you know, not not missing out on spending time with the kids and the family. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always been about prioritization. So I always put try to put family first, uh, and and obviously day job that that has to be second, pretty much in the order. And then and then my online stuff is just whenever I get to it. So most of these years, I've done most of my work in the early morning hours, usually getting up at five a.m. And working for one or two hours, depending on what's going on that day, and it's then really go to work and then come home. And but I don't know. These days, this past year, year and a half or so, I've actually been doing more of my work at night. And so, 
but like right now, the, the kids all are in bed usually by nine or nine thirty, and then I can get a couple hours in on the computer before I get too tired. I usually stay up till about midnight and then maybe get up at six and get on the computer again in the morning and at least check my emails and stuff. And you obviously, you know, write about passive income quite a bit. What are some of your favorite approaches, especially like for beginners that are like just getting their feet wet in internet marketing? Like what would I suggest? You mean? Yeah. Just in general, like some of your favorite like passive income sources. Well, I mean, I, I got to go with Amazon affiliate. That's one, it, it, as long as you have a, a website that gets traffic, I mean, passive income, it, it's not just internet marketing. There's all passive income good, could be even your 401k investments. That could be a form of passive income or real estate investing is another thing I'm trying to dabble in a little bit. I mean, yeah, mostly what I focus on is the, the online internet marketing stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, build a website, get traffic to it. As long as you can get traffic, you can make money with a website. And I, I actually, I didn't do research on this before, but have you ever done like a public case study where you like share the URL and, and all that stuff? I am on dumb passive income starting into, I think I actually started one right off the bat in 2012. And that, that's kind of been one of my, another one of my failures along the way is I've probably started at least three, maybe four of those on dumb passive income. And I've okay. never, never seen I've never finished a single one or, or seen it through till the end till it was fully successful. Cause I, I would, I had a few decently successful sites and, and once they started to make decent money, well, the, the public URL ones never really did, but, but the, the URLs that were making decent money, I was afraid to go public with them. And, and I think, you know, the reasons why for, you don't want copycats and, and people running negative SEO campaigns against you and, I guess yeah. I was always scared to lose because I've never been one of these guys who's made a super ton of money online, like quit your job kind of money. I, I could get, I, I've, I've gotten sites up to like a thousand dollars a month niche sites, but not much more than that. And, and I, I just couldn't risk losing that income. Yep. And, and I mean, I, you know, we were chatting beforehand and I don't share my sites and I actually, you know, the other interview I was doing today with Matt uh, Givanisi over at uh, money lab he was like yeah i share all my sites and i'm just like that's bananas man that that is so crazy to me but i mean once you've been burned then you're not going to do it again so i'm actually surprised that he sh he shares he shares his sites but it does bring like unmistakable like authenticity and you know people you know trust those public case studies so spencer does them and you know they're they're sprinkled throughout but a lot, a lot of people just try and stay under the radar and i i do that myself so um, i guess my biggest if you want to even call it a case study i never really did but just the dumb passive income blog itself was yeah as you mentioned it was to kind of emulate the smart passive income blog and i started out doing income reports on there and obviously everybody knew the URL of that. And that actually was my most successful site I've ever had. I mean, I, I, my dumb passive income when I was selling keyword research and, and I was making good affiliate sales or for some tools that I promoted, I, I got that up to about $3,000 a month. Awesome. Yeah. And, and that was one of the things that I, I was like, Hey, you know, this is a great blog. You're, you're publishing income reports and you, you have some historical ones and you show, like big earnings and then even the months that you like technically lost money because expenses were higher than uh, your profits and all or your your revenue and you know like i said it does bring that authentic and sort of real people will trust you more they're kind of a pain to put together and i don't want to put words in your mouth but you you stop doing income reports like on a regular basis and it seemed to be a little intermittent can you tell us a little about just putting together such reports and uh, sticking with it. Yeah. I mean, you, you really nailed it. It really did become a pain. I mean, towards the beginning, it wasn't too bad. I mean, there wasn't much income to report in the beginning, but just a couple of affiliate products that I was promoting or tools, but over the years it started growing and I kept adding tools. So every, I had a whole spreadsheet that I had to update every single month. And then I had to log into every affiliate account every month and find the income. And then carry that information over into kind of like a pre-formatted blog post that I had. And then 
my writing style, I just kept adding sections to my income reports and they kept getting longer and longer. And it got to be where it was probably taking me, I would say probably five or six hours to just to do one income report. And yeah, it just got to be too much. And yeah, so I quit. I just stopped. And uh, one of my other friends, um, Ron Stefanski, he does income reports and he started doing that. Do you know a one hour professor? Do you know Ron? We, yeah, I mean, we've never talked by voice, but we've emailed back and forth a little bit. Cool. Good. Also a great guy. And he has been doing them from the beginning and he sort of like stopped publishing other stuff on his blog, other content, and only does the income reports generally. And it's, it's kind of a, it's almost like journaling for him. So he does it like as an exercise. It's interesting, you know, since he was like, I'm just going to keep doing the income reports and I'm going to ignore the rest, but it definitely is a time consuming thing. Do you do your own bookkeeping? I do. I do not keep track of all my separate. I don't, I don't have that much separate affiliate income anymore anyways, because I, I okay. kind of let the dumb passive income blog die over the last couple of years, but yeah, I, I don't even keep track of it all anymore. I just once the money comes into my bank account, then I track it. I don't keep track how I used to. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, with that said, I encourage people to go check out the income reports. It's just interesting to see like where, where money came from and, you know, feast and famine. And I have been, um, you know, I've experienced that as well. And especially like in the early days where it's like, Oh man, you you made like $6,000 one month. And then the next month it's like, you know, two or something like that. I I think my very first income report was for something like $14. It was amazing. You made money, you know, that's a win. That's a win. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, like the product that you launched. It's a, it's a great piece of software. And I actually remember you and I chatting, I guess it was like a year and a half ago, maybe almost two years ago, I was going to the gym and you were like, Hey, I have an idea for a product and I'm going to be working on it. And you just wanted to you know, chat about it a little bit. And I was like, all right, cool. Sounds good. And honestly, I mean, a lot of people talk about doing a thing and they don't follow through, but I'm proud to say like, not only did you follow through, like you exceeded my expectations and you've been iterating and working hard on Amalinks Pro. So can you just tell us like, what is Amalinks Pro and why did you create it? Yeah, sure. In fact, I I remember that day really well. I can't remember even why I needed or wanted to tell you about it. But in in case you couldn't tell that day, I could hardly hold in my excitement because we had just stumbled on this idea for this product and I just had to tell somebody. Well, first, I'll I'll tell you what it is. Amalinks Pro is a a WordPress plugin for Amazon affiliates. In fact, our, our new tagline for the product is a WordPress plugin that works for all Amazon affiliates with or without access to the Amazon API. So, so that's what it is, how it came about. Well, I, I've been running Amazon affiliate websites for several years and I used and loved and promoted a different plugin out there. I don't mind mentioning it. Easy A's on probably everybody knows what that is. I think 2013 is when I purchased that and I used it for several years and I loved it and I promoted it. I made affiliate commissions from it and I, I would tell people like, if you're promoting stuff on Amazon on WordPress and you're not using this plugin, then you're crazy. Mm-hmm. But then over the years, that product seemed to die off. Um, Chris Gusley, the founder of it, he, I don't think he does a whole lot with like website internet marketing anymore. I, th- I think he moved over to Amazon FBA selling physical products as far as I can tell anyway. So he, he stopped making improvements to easy Azon. So it was still an okay plugin, but not great. And it, didn't really have all the features that I wanted. And so I started looking for other plugins. I tried a couple other plugins to try to find the features that I needed and wanted and just nothing else had what I really wanted and nothing was really that good. And so actually I'll I'll specifically mention one of the features that I wanted. I wanted to be able to create a a customizable CTA button, a a call to action button that I could change the colors and the, and the hover effects and the size and and the font and everything. I wanted a 100% customizable CTA button that linked to Amazon. And I had a way that I was doing that manually. I was using a different um, WordPress plugin that 
was pretty good for making CTA buttons. And I was grabbing the, the Amazon link from Easy Amazon. So I was kind of combining two plugins to get the functionality that I wanted. And I mm-hmm. thought there's gotta be a better way to do this. And so I happened to know a developer. And in fact, he's a, a mutual friend of ours. You knew him too. And um, I, I just contacted him one day. I'm like, hey, I have an idea for a plugin. I thought if I could do the CTA button thing, I'm like, why not just do all of it? Do text links, image links, and and maybe some other stuff too, and just make a whole plugin out of it and kind of make like the, the plugin that's going to release or not not release, that's going to replace Easy Amazon or, or all the other WordPress plugins, like make the the biggest, baddest Amazon WordPress plugin that ever existed. So. I had the idea, but I'm not a coder and I didn't really have tens of thousands of dollars to pay somebody because that's how much it would cost for the magnitude of what I had in my head. And so I contacted this developer and and asked him if he wanted to team up and we had a few back and forth emails and it really didn't take very long. I think it was less than a week and, and we decided to partner up and go, go 50, 50 on this thing. Cool. And did you guys like draw up, any specific like documents or ownership situation or it's like a gentleman's agreement. And like you said, I, I know the guy I've had a beer with him, just like we're, we're having a beer here. And um, I mean, I'm just curious, like from the legal standpoint, did you guys like ink it out? We did via, actually I drafted, I think I might've looked it up online, but I found a partnership agreement and then I changed a bunch of text on it and I sent it to him. I'm like, Hey, how does this look? And then we kind of, he added some stuff, I added some stuff, and then we agreed on it. And we, we basically agreed by email. We're kind of like a digital signature kind of a thing. Cool. So and yeah, we made it official. All um, right. Yeah. That's, the, that's pretty cool. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, th- this was in, I actually have a few dates written down. This was January of 2018 when this all happened, when I had the idea and I emailed him and it kind of kicked off then. So it was just over two years ago when, when the idea was born. Holy cow. And I, at that time I lived in Montana. And like I said, I literally remember the day sitting in my truck. It was snowy outside. I was about to go into the gym and um, yeah, we were chatting on the phone. So it's kind of funny. I I can like place, I can place the exact day and it was cold. Same same here. I I was in my, my 18 wheeler in my truck. It has a built in Bluetooth so I can talk while I'm driving. And I was driving, driving down the highway talking to you that day. That's cool. And, uh, you know, quick, quick callback. So I, I know Chris Guthrie as well. Good guy. I'm not a hundred percent sure the status of, uh, easy A's on, but since he can't speak for himself, I'll just say like, Hey, <laughs> they're okay. It was a fantastic plugin. And, um, I know, you know, it's still active. It's still kind of, it'll do the job basically. And they've yeah, updated he, he, it. He is, he's doing the updates that need to be done to, to keep, to keep up with like Amazon Yep. Uh, switch the API. So he's doing the updates. So it still works for everybody. He just hasn't done improvements to it as all. Well. Okay. Yeah. And maybe someday I'll have Chris on and he does many other things and it has a lot of software products out there. So just want to jump in, defend him since he's not here. So yeah, I have nothing against Chris at all. Yep. Yep. And I was going to say both you and I promoted his products and some other stuff he was working on like o- over time. So yeah, in fact, he, uh, I published a blog post on Dump Passive Income about Amalinks Pro, and he actually commented on it and, and wished me good luck. So, Cool. Yeah, great guy. Great guy overall. Yeah. It's it's funny. It's a good community we found ourselves in. So, Yeah, I mean, I love the internet marketing community. I, I try to explain it to people who don't understand it because it's like a brick and mortar business. It's kind of always like you against the other guy, but in with internet marketing, it's just everybody helping everybody else, and we all make money. Like, if you try to bring somebody else down, it's not going to really do any good for you. Indeed. So as, as far as like developing the product and, you know, you mentioned you have a few dates there. So it was January when you were pulling together the idea, you chatted with me a little bit and I was like, yeah, sounds like, I mean, there's definitely a need for that sort of thing. People do enjoy just making their life easier as far as uh, placing links and decreasing the, like the number of clicks in their workflow to insert links for Amazon. So I was like, yeah, sounds great. So how long did it take for like the first prototype to come through and how did you and uh, the developer figure out what you wanted to have in the plugin? Yeah. So 
Well, first of all, we had to think up of a name and, and choose a URL. We did that. That was one of the first things we did. And then he, he got to work right around development. We, we decided he's going to just you know, cram as many hours into coding as he can. And I'm going to try to take care of everything else. So we, we did planning, like plan the website, set up the website and bought certain tools. Like we use a easy digital downloads. It's a WordPress plugin, but it's what we use for our, our licensing and distribution of the plugin and subscriptions and all that. So different tools and like affiliate software for the site. And then uh, let's see, I don't remember the exact date, but I think it was sometime in late March or maybe early April that we started beta testing. And where I got beta testers was just from my, my email list for Dumb Passive Income. So there's plenty of people in there who also were like niche site builders or built Amazon affiliate websites. So I got a handful of people from there to help beta test. We gave them, I think we gave them all free copies. And then, cool. yeah, from, is there any specific questions you wanted to ask about development or? No, just curious about the, like the first prototype. And then, so you got beta testers. How did you manage feedback from those beta testers? Mostly just email and spreadsheets at first. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, I would send out emails and ask questions and it was, <laughs> It, well, it wasn't anything super for professional, but we had a spreadsheet and we still have a spreadsheet to this day, our development spreadsheet that we work off of. Okay. Yeah, I just, just put all the suggestions. So we started out with just, you can insert text links, image links, CTA buttons. And then we had a, a feature that we, we call it the showcase box, which is pretty much a, a product information box. And our early version of that was much different than what they look like now. It wasn't as good as it is now, but. Cool. Th those were our first four core features that we weren't going to launch it until we had all four of those in place. Okay. And then you've never done like software development or worked in that kind of environment, right? Not at all. Nope. I, I do not code. I right. cannot code. And then uh, the developer, and we, we just call him the developer because he's under the radar. He, he's an anonymous dude, a uh, nice guy, but yeah. Th so the developer, he obviously has spent time like uh, working with users, testers, and other folks like that. Yeah, so he actually, he also has a full-time day job and his full-time day job is he is a WordPress developer. So that's what he does all day, every day. Okay. And, and he does WordPress development for like big name, big websites that you would recognize in universities and places. So very smart dude. Yeah. yeah. And my mind is uh, going to explode because I'm just, I'm thinking how much of a nightmare and how much I would dislike having to take feedback from users via email, putting it in spreadsheets and just that turnaround cycle. Did you guys have any, so I guess, really the, with the growing pain. testing? Yeah. With the, we really didn't get a whole lot of feedback. In fact, most of the, the feedback was from me, from me using it and just giving him the feedback. <laughs> we we did okay. get some from users, but most of it was just me because okay. I, you know, cause I'm a user. And, and so he would, the, the, the developer, he would have, uh, we'll call it issues. He would have issues seeing things from the user's point of view, being a developer. And, yep. and then he was really appreciative of my point of view. And that's another thing I'll say about this partnership, but him and I both would tell you and then both agree that, that there's no chance that Amalinks Pro would be what it is today without this partnership. But like he, he could have never done it on his own. There's no way I could have done it on my own. Just that the whole partnership has worked out far better than, than neither of us ever expected it could have or would have. And it just, and it's really grown into a, a, a true friendship. We, we chat on, on Google Hangouts pretty much every day. And I, and I mean, text chat, like just texting, typing back and forth. Right on. And have you guys met in person, by the way? Never. I mean, we've, we've done video on Google Hangouts before. So. Well, you know, about a midway spot for both of you guys is around where I live. So maybe we yeah, can sure. set something <laughs> up. Actually, when we started, he lived over towards the East Coast. And then mid-summer of, when was it? I think 2018, I think. Yep. Yeah, he, it was. He, he moved way over to the West Coast. And we were going to try to hook up a thing when, when he was shooting across the country in his car with his wife. We were going to try to meet up, but it didn't work out. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and I mean, just cause I, I worked in software for uh, many years doing project management. So it was like right in the, right in the area where I had, I basically had to work with all the teams, like the, 
the business, uh, the actual business users, the developers, the testers, the other clients and, and stakeholders associated with everything. And I'm, like I said, I'm just imagining like the, the process that you're describing and I'm like, Oh man, that's rough. But, but you mentioned, um, like the beta testers weren't necessarily giving a ton of feedback. It was mostly from you. And in, in my head, I'm like, Oh man, it, it would be really hard to qualify the beta testers because, you know, I, I knew the beta was coming out and I don't, I don't think I actually used it much because I've already figured out this problem, right? So I was doing things another way and that's a challenge. I, I would imagine where the people that are maybe the, the best customers for you, the best users of this Amalinks Pro have already figured out a solution to the problem. So did you see that? Like where... But I will like, say now yeah. that our, our best feedback comes from our users who have paid for the plugin. So the beta testers, they got it for free. I'm not even sure how much they were really using it. Yep. But since we started selling it and people have been paying for it and, and we have a support form and, and we encourage people to give us feedback and suggestions because one of our taglines for the pro for the plugin is built for us, which that's funny. I can quickly tell you on a tangent where that came from. I'm, I'm drinking this beer from Founders right now, mm -hmm. and their tagline is brewed for us. And that's <laughs> kind of where I stole that from. So Amalinx like, Pro is built for us, meaning it's for all of us, like not just us, me and the developer, for us to make money from. It, it's for us, uh, Amazon affiliates, all of us. And and so we, we encourage feedback, and, and we want to hear feedback. We want to hear what people want. And and we're going to add it to the plugin if it makes sense for everybody. Did so, yeah, you? We, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, it just we we've gotten incredible feedback and made some awesome changes based on user feedback. And do you have any quick examples? Like, hey, well, what was the best thing you, that you added that was directly from uh, one of the users? You just had to ask a specific question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we can come back to it if you think of it. I'm, so, I'm, I mean, there's a lot of just small things. I'm trying to, not anything real huge, like not a major feature, but a lot of small things like a user would say, here's a good example, the, the CTA buttons, or, or say like the, the CTA button on the showcase box was always editable. It, it, the default was view on Amazon is what the text would say. And then you could just click on it and edit it, but you had to click on it and edit it every time you created a button. And somebody said, we, we want to have a, a global CTA text. So you just set it one time in the settings and then that's always the text every time, you know, automatically you don't have to click and type it and change it every time. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. So, so we implemented that for, for the showcase boxes and for the tables. That is a great idea. I mean, if there, if there's code that's duplicated like through the site, then yeah, you should manage it in one place. Yep. Very smart. And you really can only get like the true feedback from the paid customers because I have courses, right? So I, I stayed out of products for whatever reason, even though software potentially would have come you know, like more naturally to me with courses. I've given my course away to like family and friends and 100% uh, do not use it. It's only people that pay for a product that will go through the course, use the product give you feedback and actually like treat it with value. So that totally makes sense to me. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. I mean, I, I've experienced it in my own life. Yeah. And I mean, you, you gave me the plugin and I did not use it for quite some time. So that is my bad. <laughs> You're bad. All right. And, so, and then I had to tell you, I'm like, hey, these other affiliates are making a lot of money with this. You could be too. <laughs> so you, then you had to use it and figure it out. That's right. Well, and the other thing is, um, and this is uh, my show is about tangents sometimes. And even though I knew it was a quality product, I know both the founders, like personally, I don't want to do beta testing generally. And I don't want to use like version 1.0. I want to use like 1.2 after the kinks have been worked out and I've been burned like early in my uh, like affiliate marketing career, I would promote a product and then it would disappear after six months. And I'm like, 
what is happening here? So I kind of, I, I want to pressure test something through, you know, being out in the market, actually launching, actually having customers. I don't want to, and not, I mean, well, now, now, that, now that we're talking now and I've sold a couple of your products for you, you know, I could tell you face to face, Matt, that I was like, all right, I want to make sure this thing has some lasting power. So did you, did you see that in other areas? Like, did it take a couple iterations before some other folks were promoting for you? I guess I, yeah, I, I, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and I, actually I'm kind of glad you did because the, the version or the, the product that we have now is so much different than it was when I first gave it to you. It's a lot better now. A lot, a lot of the kinks are worked out. Like you said, there's a lot of optimizations and improvements that have been done based on user feedback. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. And, and like you said, you want to make sure we're going to stay around and well, we're, we're two years and going strong. And I mean, two years in, I think we're, we're just barely getting started really. Yep. And when you look at other software products, it's like, it takes a little while to get your footing, to understand what the customers really want. And then like the buzz comes around and like other people are talking about it. And it's like, Hey, there's, there's a new plugin, but it's like two years old, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been around for a little while and now it's just like catching, catching yeah, we're traction. Just, we're just at the point now where it's starting to be somewhat, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but amazed, baffled was, I don't know what the right word is, but just we're, we're at the point where it's starting to take off where, I mean, if I, I'll go into Facebook groups that I haven't even been in in a while and I see other people talking about the product that I created and recommending it to other people. I'm like, wow, this is cool. That's awesome. But yeah, we're well, at the point now that, I mean, sales are coming more regularly than, than they were in the beginning. And, and the, the, the plugin is complete now. I mean, now we have, and there's, there's going to be more cool features that we're going to add in the future. But for right now, as of the date that I'm talking to you right now, we're, it's pretty much complete. The core features are done. Just minor fixes need to be done. And, and we're going into kind of full-time marketing mode and going to start really promoting this thing. Awesome. And were, were there any things that um, were like especially challenging that you didn't think were going to be that big of a deal with uh, either the creation or marketing or anything with Himalayan Pro? A couple of things came up that we could not have predicted. So I'm, I'm looking at my little list of dates here, which I kind of, we went away from that a little bit, but I'll, I'm going to go back to July 17th of 2018. So we were beta testing, I think in March or April for a couple months. We set July 17th for whatever reason as our official launch date when we're going to officially put it for sale to the public. E email my, my small email list and, and this and that. So we're, we're really excited. We're super excited. We, we're, we knew we were going to get rich and make like $200,000 each that first year. <laughs> J July 17th, crickets. We didn't make a single sale on that first day. Hmm. Not, even, not even one. But then, you know, a, a few started trickling in here and there. And then here's the first thing that we could not have predicted. I, I guess we could have if we've been paying attention, but WordPress released version 5.0 and made Gutenberg now the default editor. And you know what that oh, is. I mean, ev everybody, all plugins had to adjust for that. I mean, yep. users could still install the classic editor and I still do, I still do use the classic editor and the plugin the way that we originally had it still works with the classic editor, but all new WordPress users were gonna be automatically using the Gutenberg editor and, and somebody brand new to WordPress might not even know anything about the classic editor. And, and some people did want to move over to, to the new Gutenberg editor anyway. So we had to make the plugin compatible with Gutenberg. And so I can't remember that was in the fall of 2018, I think. Like I, I think right around October. Yeah, that's I think right. We we're, we we're trying to prepare for Black Friday. We we're trying to get some things done so we could really do a big push for Black Friday. And then that kind of got sprung on us like the month before Black Friday and, and we really had to hustle to, to get our Gutenberg blocks in place. So we, we saw other plugins do some like temporary fixes that would make them kind of work with Gutenberg, but we wanted to make ours right. We wanted to have actual Gutenberg blocks for Amalinx Pro. And so the, the, the developer worked really hard for a couple of weeks there. Like he worked insane hours to get that thing ready. Holy cow. And, um, yeah, I don't use Gutenberg. I was a little excited when I first 
saw it, but I mean, when it comes down to it, honestly, like WordPress is bloated and slow. And if you use, I mean, if you use some of the like page builders and stuff, it can go extremely slow. So I, I use classic, I'm a speed freak and I really, I mean, I've actually, this is kind of, this is a little bit weird, Matt, but share it with you now um i've i've looked because i have a little bit of a coding background i'm a little bit technical and i've looked at just moving over to like a flat file system where you just write html you can manage all the stuff that we do in wordpress in like text files and i was like this would be so much faster and you don't have the overhead the security is much tighter it's all in text files and um, yeah, it's really, it's out there. But as I was, as I was looking at Gutenberg and I'm like, this is crazy. Like how much slower everything works and just the overhead with using Gutenberg. So I'll get yeah, off my soapbox. I've box. tried a few times to give Gutenberg a chance. And I just don't like it either. I mean, when I want to create a really nice fancy page, I use Elementor as my, my page builder of choice. It's a really great page builder, I think. And if you ask me Gutenberg right now, the way it is now, it's just, it's just like, a crappy page builder is all it is in my opinion. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I won't get it. I've only, I only used it for like a month or two. And then it was like, okay, all my plugins broke. Everything's like not working, going back to classic and yeah, hopefully things will change. Cause I, if I understand correctly, Gutenberg is, or sorry, the classic editor is not going to be supported after like 2022, something like that. Is that right? Yeah, that's just the WordPress version of the classic editor, but that doesn't mean anybody can make a plugin that emulates the classic editor exactly like the way we knew it. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we should do that plugin now. All right. <laughs> strike um, up a partnership. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that's, that was one thing. So Gutenberg came out. Um, any other like big challenges that, that you guys ran into? The next one really came this past October. Going, I'll quickly go through my my list of dates again, but um, yeah, fe February of 2019 was the first big affiliate promo that we ever ran. So, oh wait, we had the oh we had a Black Friday 2018 sale, and there were where we made some decent money. We're like th that Black Friday sale that we ran. We're like, all right, this is real. This is cool. I mean, we made a few thousand dollars that first Black Friday, which was exciting to us. And then February 2019, um, Chris Lee was running Rank Excel at the time. He sold it since then, but he did a big affiliate promo for us and let us uh, publish a guest post on his site and promoted to his list a couple of times. And, and we made several thousand dollars off of his sale. And so that was really cool. And that was kind of a, a really big push for us and kind of re-motivated us again and you know, just g gave us proof that like, yeah, this thing's working. We got to keep going. And April 2019, so about 10 months ago, that's when we launched our next big feature, which is our table builder. And so our, our table builder, we think is easily the, the best table builder for Amazon products that, that exists anywhere. I mean, we've tried all of them, but we purchased just about everything else that was out there just to see what they were doing. And we had, had a goal of making ours, you know, like taking the best features of everybody else's and just making ours better. So it's, Really, it's it's kind of like a drag and drop page builder. It's 100% responsive. It's, it's not automatic, I should add. You have to choose which columns you want to not show on smaller devices. But once you do that, once you set that setting, it's a, it's a really good um, responsive table builder. Okay, cool. And I, uh, I'm usually a proponent, and you, you don't have to sell it to me, but I'm usually a proponent of HTML tables and I go to a HTML table generator and just code it up, you know, do, do my thing. So why is Amalinx pro in the table builder easier or better, or, you know, going to make most more, more sales? I mean, just the fact that we're connected to the Amazon API. If you, if you are, if you're not, it, it's a little bit more work to build your table because you have to manually insert the links but if you're connected to the API, you just you know type in your search term for your product, and then uh, the search results 
pull up the first 10 search results from Amazon and then you can go to the next 10 and the next 10. You just choose the products you want to put in, and you know, click, 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 and then you click one button and it inserts them all into the table. And then, and then you just add your table settings and add or remove columns. And it's just super okay. simple and fast. And I don't know the, the tables that you're describing, the HTML, I don't know if you can make those responsive or not. Um, yeah, you can. I mean, it's just um, straight up HTML. But I mean, I admitted it earlier. I'm a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> so, and I, I do have the tech background. So code doesn't really scare me too much. And what you just described is much more approachable for the average human that is not me. Yeah, not I mean, that I have if special If you look skills. at the, the homepage on our website, I, I have a video on there. It's, it's me creating a table and inserting it into WordPress in less than three minutes. Uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, you, I thought that you, was a great video to put on a homepage. <laughs> yes, it, that is it. Like that's it. Cause it takes me definitely longer than three minutes. Yep. So I, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about some of the other things like on dumb passive income and in your blog there. One thing is, um, you know, you kind of alluded to it before you had this blog, you started in uh, May of 2012 and you published you're a busy guy. Some of your publishing schedule was intermittent, I guess, at best. And, and you were like, hey, I let it die for a little while. So what's going on with it now? What are you trying to do with Dumb Passive Income? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to revitalize it right now. I, I had this idea where I would kind of change my style a little bit and make it more into like what a technical, what the technical definition for a blog, which is literally, literally a web log, which is a blog is meant to really be like a diary. And so I'm kind of changing my format and talking about in, in my latest, like three or four posts, I call them my weekend update posts. And then I give each one a unique title because I, I typically do most of my writing these days on the weekends because there's just not enough time during the week for me. So it's my weekend update. And, and I just kind of talk about more personal things. I try to add a little bit of humor, just, just stuff that's going on in my life. And like, like in the past, my blog was more like tutorials, like internet marketing tutorials, and it's not going to be that anymore. I want to, I want to be stuff that's more readable, where people can kind of get to know me and my family and what's going on. It, it'll still have some internet marketing stuff, like, like I'm, I'm including links to Amazon products and those, kind of just so I can show off my Amalinks Pro product. Gotcha. Just, just and, show people how it works. And I, it, I can't remember if it was like the beginning of this year, but you were like, Hey, I'm going to publish something every week. And that was my goal. Cool. It, how, yeah. How's it going so far? I, it's been about three weeks since my last publish. I just, my, my weekends have been so crazy. I mean, gotcha. my, my, uh, my daughter was doing swim for the last five or six weeks. So every Saturday morning at seven o'clock, we had to be there for her swim meets. And then my son is in a basketball league and he also has basketball games on Saturdays and, yeah, the schedule, my weekend schedule got a little crazy. Holy cow. But I'm, I'm still trying. I'm trying. I wanted to do weekly. I'm still going to try to do at least a couple a month. But I really want to keep publishing content on there and, and keep it going. How has the reception been for some of the more personal content and just a different approach? I haven't really gotten a lot of comments. I mean, I've gotten a couple email replies and a few comments and, and the few people who did reply they really liked it they said they did anyways cool i don't know i'm hearing I, i'm i'm hearing that blog commenting isn't really as big of a thing these days as it used to be i still get some comments on on uh niche site project but yeah not as many as back in the day and i, I don't know if those conversations have moved over to like facebook more or i mean what, what do you think those conversations are happening now I mean, I do see a lot of stuff in Facebook groups. I don't have my own Facebook group, so. Okay. Yeah, I, well, I don't spend much time in Facebook groups at all. Are you, are you in many of them? Just a, well, I am in many of them, but just a few that I kind of keep up with, a few internet marketing related ones. Okay. Like cool. Spence, Spencer's is good. There's, there's good interaction in there. The, the niche pursuits one and the human proof designs. I think or actually mm -hmm. theirs is now called building online empires. Yeah. yeah there, there's a few good ones that have good interaction. In shifting gears a little bit, I was doing research for this interview and I was like looking back at some of your 
old case studies and, and blog posts out there. And one that I want to highlight is um, there was, uh, I think it was called like getting the thin content penalty from Google, which I experienced back in the day as well. In fact, um, and I can't remember if I've told you this, Matt, specifically, but you know, I, I got a thin content penalty back in 2015 and you obviously wrote about it um, on your blog too. We'll put a link in the description for people to go check out. But an interesting thing, and I'll, I'll let you talk about your thin content penalty. An interesting thing is, um, so I got, I got my penalty and then I was like trying to like, you know, revamp and, and recover some of my sites. Cause I had like five or six go down, something like that. It was pretty rough. It was a rough fall when that happened. Yeah. I remember and that. It, yeah, it was, it was terrible. Like m many of us got hit and I developed my, my course five figure niche site like six months later, something like that. And I was like, Hey Matt, do you want to promote my course? And you were like, I don't know, Doug, like you, you really haven't um, done anything interesting. Like you got caught up in the penalty. I'm not really sure about the course. And I was like, it was a wake up call, Matt. Like you called me out and I was like, you know what? You're a hundred percent right. I may have even put that in an email and was like, yeah, you're right, dude. And um, I regrouped and did some other stuff. And I was like, what else can I do? And that is when I came up roughly in that time frame over the course of five months, came up with a keyword golden ratio, which is like a thing that I talk about all the time. Other people talk about it too, but it was sort of like originating from the email that you sent, our thin content penalty and me trying to figure out like how to do something very different from the previous approach. So thanks for that, by the way, for calling me out. And, uh, you're, and just, you're welcome. <laughs> and, and then, yeah, you were like, dude, I, I don't know if you're doing anything interesting at all. Does your course even work? And then I was like, you know what? I got to, I got to put up some numbers here and do something interesting. But you know, I, I did the same thing to Chris Lee early on. Cause he was selling a course when he first came on the scene, like nobody ever had heard of him before. And all of a sudden he's out there telling everybody he's making $10,000 a month from, from amp or from AdSense and he's selling the course. And he asked me to promote his course at the time for him. I'm like, dude, why should I believe you? Like we need proof. And then after that, he's like, you're right. And he started posting screenshots of his AdSense. Awesome. So yeah. what, what was, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about the thin content penalty and like the impacts to you um, just overall, like going through it? I remember that one specifically that, that actual, that specific site was, <laughs> I've had a lot of crazy um, topics we'll say for my niche sites over the years. I, I built a lot of niche sites and that one was one of my more successful sites. It was a site about organic shampoo and solely based on, I, I'm not an organic guy. I don't care what shampoo I use. I just, it was based on keyword research okay. is all. <laughs> and, and my writer who wrote for me, I had the same writer for oh, probably five years. It's the only writer I ever really used. She was a phenomenal writer. She was a female. And so she was really good at writing about shampoo and she knew a lot about hair and stuff. So th that was a really nice, good, successful site. And you remember that time frame? That's when we were all into building PBNs and using PBNs to rank our sites. And I'm pretty sure that's where the, I thought I made it through. Everybody else was getting their, their PBN penalties and getting their, their sites taken down by Google. And, and I thought I made it through and that thin content penalty blog post that was, I think it was like nine or 10 months after everybody else was getting their penalties for PBNs. And then I got the thin content penalty and I'm like, there is no way this site is thin content. It's phenomenal content on this site. But other people at the time were saying that they got that same penalty. And the only thing they could attribute it to is the fact that they use PBNs. Yep. So that's what, that's what that was all about. It was because I use PBNs to help rank that site. Yep. And that is the thing that we were doing and you could go, you know, we, we mentioned Spencer and niche pursuits a couple of times and Spencer, you know, was working on PBNs. And then, you know, when we got our penalties, he, you know, he wrote a blog post. I'm never using PBNs again, got a huge amount of coverage out there. And I mean, he was one of the bigger bloggers that got hit and it cost us all quite a lot of money and made us rethink, you know, how we were approaching SEO in general. Yep. 
man, that was a rough day. It's like the worst email you can get, but what a learning experience, you know? I mean, PBNs were so cool. It was amazing how you could rank a site with them, but then, but there was so much work to maintain too. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad that I don't have to deal with them anymore. Yeah. And like once that happened, I like completely shifted gears and I mean, I, I think it's valuable. It's a valuable experience overall just to like go through a penalty, like a manual penalty like that and see what it looks like. I think, you know, it's kind of like a, well, I'm no athlete. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you, <laughs> if you were Matt, but I'm, I'm no athlete, but it's like taking advice from like, um, you know, a, a, a pro athlete that just is naturally gifted and, and they're, you know, they have bigger muscles or stronger, full head of hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm bald. So, um, you know, they, they have many more advantages. And um, if you're taking advice from someone who doesn't like, at least maybe like test the limit of what they can do. Um, I don't know. I feel like they're missing out a little bit. Do you have any thoughts on that? It's kind of an out there. Um, I'm connecting the dots maybe where they shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh. You mean you mean advice from somebody who hasn't who hasn't yeah. who hasn't really walked the walk or talked the talk that kind yep. of thing? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Well, yeah, pretty much what you said. Okay. I mean, cool. Don't, it's it's like taking taking advice from broke people or taking money advice from broke people. Doesn't quite make sense. There's that analogy. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good segue, Matt. It's like you're a a, f- a full time podcast guest. Let's talk about the financial freedom aspect and I'm very interested in that topic and I've been interviewing a couple people that are in the financial independence movement and I don't know, do you follow any of that like fire or just in general, some of those, those podcasts out there? I listen to a lot of different podcasts, the, the financial freedom stuff. Um, I, I guess I'll say I'm into it. The, the thing we haven't talked about, my, my day job, it's mo- a lot of people who do this internet marketing, it, it's, their, it's their goal to like make as much money as fast as possible so they can quit their day job. And, and that's not me at all. Cause I, I really, I actually like my day job. I work for an awesome company and I, I enjoy what I do during the day, throughout the day, every day. But with that being said, when, and, and I say when, not if, when it gets to a point that I'm making ridiculous money online where it's, it's just just unfathomable but it's just stupid for me to even still consider going to a day job then that i might have to consider quitting but as of right now i'm just going to keep going the way i am i i like driving a truck during the day and doing the internet marketing stuff at night and in the morning and it's just kind of cool to say i mean that, that's one of my my tagline on the dumb passive income blog i'm i'm the only known trucker who's blogging about making passive income online <laughs> That's a pretty good tagline. Yeah. And well, I guess like diving in a little deeper. So with a financial independence movement, and I, I'll put you on the spot. You listen to my podcast a little bit, right? Yeah. Do you mean, what was the guy's name you just published a couple of days ago? Yeah. Carl Jensen, yeah. Mr. 1500. Yeah. I listened to that one. So I, I've sort of, I moved into the right neighborhood. So I have like, are you familiar, familiar with uh, Mr. Money Mustache as well? I don't listen to his stuff. I checked out his blog before. <laughs> okay. And, and, and I'll admit that the, the first impression I got was he's like a minimalist or something, I think. I don't really know for sure. Sure. And I'll say that minimalism yeah. and frugality, those are two things that annoy me. I don't, I don't like either of those things. The, the people don't annoy me, annoy me, just the concepts do. Gotcha, I'm, gotcha. I'm more of the like push for more, get more and not, well, here's my concept with money. Instead of spend less than you make is what a lot of people like the Dave Ramsey crowd, you need to live on less than you make, but that's not my philosophy at all. My, I'd rather live by, I need to earn more than I want to spend, which is kind of the same thing, just saying it a different way. Sure. And it's, it's the uh, scarcity model versus like abundance where, Hey, we can all like do more and make more money, which, which I agree with. And I think, um, again, I'll jump in for Pete is Mr. Money Mustache. Who's, who's just a normal dude who would uh, drink a beer with you. 
Um, so a lot of, a lot of these folks are just, um, just very normal, very like unassuming. They're pretty chill, pretty quiet. And, um, I would guess you would probably get along with, with these guys pretty well, Matt. And, um, yeah, they're not super frugal. It's just like they choose to spend money in specific areas. Like me, for example, I don't care much about my, my truck. So I have kind of a, you know, I have like a 15 year old, like pretty crappy truck, but I really like, uh, to enjoy the home that I'm in. So we're like, we're buying a pretty nice home coming up soon. And then, um, some of the gadgets and electronics and stuff, I like gear and, uh, do YouTube stuff. So I will spend a lot on the areas where I'm like, Hey, I'm really into it. And, um, I, I see value in it and I just like it, you know? you gotta, you gotta spend your money on something. So I think, I think, like I said, just to defend those, those guys a little bit, Pete's not necessarily frugal, but yeah, certain areas, he's just like, I don't mind much about that. Um, but they do save a lot. That's the big thing. They, they save a ton. So yeah, I, I really um, don't know his full story. I just, and it's been a few years, but I just looked sure. at his blog once because I, I had heard from other people in certain circles that like he was a really popular blog. So I just checked it out one day, but no, I, I really don't follow him or know for sure what he's all about right on okay cool and then um i guess just any sort of money philosophies other than hey we can make some more money and just make sure you're not going into debt do you have any other sort of i was just gonna make a point of what i do spend my money on it's i got these three things in my house here they're called kids (laughs) (laughs) and at the the age they are now 12 9 and 7 just just the stuff they're into toys and not not so much toys, but the sports they're into. I mean, it costs us hundreds and hundreds of dollars just for their sports, just for the signups and the equipment and the uniforms, and it's it's nuts. Yeah, I I don't have any kids, so um. <laughs> and yeah, we 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 built a brand new house three years ago. Now that we've been in almost three years now. So oh, that's we awesome. Have, we have a nice house too. So. So did you guys like design? design everything and like um choose all all the uh yeah we went had an architect design the whole thing for us he we told him what we wanted he made a drawing and then we made some edits and went back to him and yeah we built built this house for the long term kind of like main floor laundry main floor master bedroom and all that just so when we get old we don't have to go up and down stairs and planning to stay in this house for the long haul that's pretty awesome pretty awesome yeah we we got a ranch too planning on getting old so cool so we're we're sort of coming towards the end and you mentioned a couple of mistakes already do you have any others that you want to highlight that maybe will help people that are in a different point in their journey to not make those mistakes actually i would say do make the mistakes and I, probably other people have given the same advice but as far as specific mistakes i don't really know which ones i could highlight or point out i've mentioned several of them already but you just you you hear the advice all the time just jump in and do stuff and don't just listen to podcasts and and take courses and read books you get you got to just jump in and do it and and make the mistakes because that's really the best way to learn awesome and i think you answered the question already but i was going to say you know if you have advice for people that want to uh you know, get started. Maybe they haven't pulled the trigger yet, but you just said, you know, take some action, do something, do anything. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love personally listening, listening to podcasts. I mean, I guess we're on one right now, but it's an awesome way to learn. You can learn while you're driving around, which, which I do a lot. Or if, if you're the working out type running on a treadmill or something, and you, you can be learning while you're doing that. Very cool. In fact, I'm at, I'm at the point in my life and actually I have been for a long time where I, I mean, I like music, but like during the day when I'm driving around, I can't listen to music. Cause I feel like, I feel like I'm getting stupider by the minute if I'm listening to music. Cause I should, I should be listening to words and learning things. That's funny. Yeah. I, uh, it, it's funny. We're old guys now we're middle-aged and uh, I mean, I listen to classic rock and I don't know anything about, um, like newer music at all. I, I like, uh, a couple hair bands from the eighties. I enjoy a little grunge and then a, a lot of the, uh, like classic rock from the seventies. Uh, what, what kind of music do you like? I like a lot of music. I, I like all that stuff. I'd say my, my main genre would probably be country. And I like the older country from like the seventies and eighties. 
my like new stuff too but yeah rock and roll like some heavy metal i like hip-hop some of some of the alternative stuff i like a lot of stuff you, you christian music i can even listen to classical awesome. pretty just about anything it depends what mood i'm in that day cool matt well where can people find you where do you want them to uh check out your stuff well de- definitely our our product amalinks pro and we actually have a really good blog on that website too that's where you know, I try to write on dumb passive income, but most of my writing these days is on, on the Amalinks Pro blog where we, we just write about st- stuff on there to help inform people in the Amazon affiliate niche and keep people up to date on some of like the rules and regulations with Amazon and strategies and stuff. So there's there's that. And then, yeah, just my dumb passive income blog. We'll put links in the uh, description so people can find that easily and I can attest personally that um, the content over on the Amalinks Pro blog, very good, very good demos of uh, using the tool. But not only that, like you said, sticking within the rules for uh, Amazon Associates. And there's a very, very cool, I guess it's a tutorial on Google Analytics and how to track your links a little better I didn't prep you for this, Matt, but can you tell us a little bit about that? Or can, can you do that? I, I can tell you that I did not write that post. <laughs> the, the developer okay. wrote that one. He, he's the, he's the, I'll call him the data geek on our team or the data nerd, if you want to say it that way. But I, I have always been the type as far as analytics. I install analytics on every site and I kind of look at the traffic a little, but I don't like digging into it. In fact, I don't like the setup of the new analytics. I like the way it was a few years ago. I think it was simpler to get around. I don't like the new analytics at all. Okay. And so he set that up basically with Amalinks Pro. You click one button and just just to turn on the event tracking and then all everything you do in Amalinks Pro or, or all the clicks to all your links to Amalinks Pro are automatically tracked in your analytics. And, and then you can go into your analytics and see exactly which buttons and exactly which links are getting clicks. And then if you want, you can set up separate tracking IDs for the ones that are getting more clicks to, to see which ones are converting the best. Okay. But it is a really good post that he wrote with a really good tutorial on how to use it, but not just how he, he goes into why and how you could be using it to increase your conversions. And I need to do a video on that because like when I read it, I was like, this is fantastic. This is really good. And it, it gives you that granular level of analytics that is hard to come by unless you're a data nerd. You know? I, I think I even told him, the developer, I said, I, I think most people are probably like me. Like the only stat we care about is the income in our Amazon Associates report. That's it. That's the only one I've ever really looked at or cared about. But if you're serious, you really should be looking at some more sophisticated stats like this and it's really not that difficult especially with his tutorial yeah once you set it up it's good to go and then it gives you so much data it's a very good tutorial so i'll put a link to that as well awesome all right thanks matt really appreciate it yeah yeah this was fun really good beer too we'll have to do this again sometime yeah for sure man and uh if maybe i can get you guys (laughs) Over in this area, we do a little meetup or something like that. We'll see how it goes. I would also like to cordially invite you to Beer City USA, which is the nickname for Grand Rapids, Michigan. If you ever make it this way, I'll I'll bring you out to some really cool breweries. All right. Well, maybe, maybe I will. I, you know, I drove through um, Grand Rapids. Like I went to like Traverse City. I don't know. It was, it was several years ago, maybe in 2013, 2014. So we didn't know each other well and we were kind of zipping through town, but I was like, it's pretty awesome here in the summer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful area. Really exploded over the last several years. Cool. Well, have a good night there, Matt. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot to Matt, and I think I'll probably have him on again to chat about some some other things or a few other topics that uh, we, we maybe could have gotten into, and I, we just ran out of time. So I appreciate the time. He's a super busy dude, and um, yeah, if you have any questions for Matt, just leave them in the comments below.